Cool. We'll just get started. So uh, thank you so much to uh, Fausto and everybody. Oh, there it is. Chat. Awesome. All righty. Now I see it. Yeah, just want to be able to see what uh, people are typing in and uh, be able to respond. I like to do these um, presentations with a little um, interaction. And so there we go. Awesome. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Barry Burns here, topdogtrading.com. Today, uh, I'm going to talk about my uh, five-step checklist that I use for profitable trading. This is the exact methodology that I use every day, day in, day out for uh, both day trading and swing trading. I do both. And um, I'm always looking for opportunities. So I'll trade stocks, forks, futures, commodities, whatever's moving, uh, that's what I'll trade. Um, you know, you can't make money if a market doesn't move. So I'm always looking for the, the market that's moving, the raging bull market, the raging bear market. And today I'm going to show you my five-step checklist on how I find those markets and exactly how I trade them. So there's my ugly mug. Um, I appreciate Fausto saying I look so young. I'm not, you, know, you look at yourself, you're not so sure. But anyway, I appreciate all of his uh, compliments. Uh, and uh, he already mentioned a couple of the um, qualifications I've got. So I'm not going to take a lot of time here to tell you that, but I am the author of Trend Trading for Dummies. I get Reader's Choice Awards from Stocks of Commodities Magazine. Gosh, every year, actually. Appreciate all of you who voted for me, by the way. Also uh, have contributed to other author books and work for and with, I should say, not for, but with major companies, done presentations for all these companies and many, many more. And obviously, they vet me heavily before they invite me to come and train their traders. Uh, here's our legal disclaimer. And uh, I know that you've seen this before, but during these kind of presentations, people come in and out, and it's very important that you see this. So we want to make sure that those who have just come in are also um, seeing this because um, you got to understand this is not just legalese. This is really where your education begins and should always continue. So the regulators have actually done us a favor by sharing with us how most people lose money trading. And that is the fact. That's the transparent fact. Most people do lose money trading. This is not a get rich quick game. It's not even a game. It's a real business. And part of being successful is to treat it like a real business. Yeah, the competition is smart. The competition is tough. You know, Fausto is going to be showing you how to uh, track down their smart money. And that's a really great way to trade because the smart money is the profitable money. But most of the people out there, most of the people trading, um, take this too lightly and don't understand that um, that's what it's all about to compete with the smart money is not an easy thing to do. So anyway, um, I encourage you to read the disclaimer. And if you need more time, feel free to go to topdogtrading.com. Click on the legal disclaimer link there and, um, and take your time. And again, treat it as an education to help protect yourself. Now, let's, um, let's do a little quiz here. Not really a quiz. I just want to get some feedback from you. Let's make this a little bit um, engaging. So what are your, go ahead and type into the chat box. What are your most common trading problems? What are you guys struggling with these days? And I can customize the presentation by um, looking at your answers. And obviously I've got a pre-rendered PowerPoint, so we're gonna cover you know, a certain structure, a certain path, a certain track, if you will. But I wanna make sure that I'm um, being uh, very attentive to what your needs are. Every audience is different. So with your answers here, what this will allow me to do is when I come across a topic in the presentation and you guys say, yeah, that's a problem I'm having, I will slow down and I'll spend more time on that. And then a topic in my presentation that not many of you say you're having problems with, okay, I'll just go through that fast. So matter of a time allocation, if you will. All right, so let's see what we got here. Franz says, uh, fake outs. Uh, Kershed says, getting started. Uh, Canty says, I'm funny. Well, that's good. It's good to know that I have a, uh, a fallback as a comedian if I ever need it. Alan, trying to find stocks that don't drop without, within a couple days of getting in them. Uh, Ed, market goes into the opposite direction of what I expect as soon as I enter the market. Yes, that's, <laughs> I've heard that one before and I've lived that one before, by the way, so I can relate to that. 
Uh, can't me picking the entry well enough to not take more risk than I can afford? Very important, great one. Yeah, I rarely, in fact, I wanna give um, extra accolades to you because rarely do I find people talk about risk management and money management, but boy, is that important. Talk about the professionals. As professional traders, we put more emphasis on risk management and money management than you know, indicators and all that kind of stuff that amateurs chase. Uh, what else we got here? Picking the entry. Okay, got that one. Uh, SJ, entries and exits. Well, that's pretty important. <laughs> that's kind of the whole business, isn't it? Where do I enter? When do I exit? Uh, Frank, when to exit. Good. Agatha, entries. Uh, Michelo, did I pronounce that correct? Lack of knowledge, proper knowledge, and exactly what to do. Okay, well, that's education. Good. By the way, um, until you get a good education, please, and this goes for everybody, please do not trade with real money until you've gotten a real professional education. You want to play around and do, use simulators, demo accounts, fake money, whatever, that's fine. Get a feel for the market, but you will lose. You will lose if you don't get a professional education. This is a profession. So, okay. Love it. Um, Dale, ignoring the pundits on CNBC. Okay, I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> but I will tell you, um, well, no, I'll just leave it alone. Charles, entries and exits, uh, Dean exits. Okay, great. So um, here, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share with you the results of a survey that I took of tens of thousands, literally tens of thousands of traders. Uh, about once a year, I run this survey and to find out what uh, most people are struggling with. So here are the answers that came in, the most common answers, the top five, All right? So number one is people said, well, I enter the market, and then as soon as I enter, I get stopped out. And then after I get stopped out, the market goes back in the original direction of my trade. And they say, so in, I'm you know, mixing a bunch of answers here into one and summarizing a group of different answers that all meant the same thing. So they said, so frustrating that they got the direction right, but their timing was wrong. Any of you had this problem? In fact, when I was in Chicago working with uh, my mentor at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, he said, Barry, amateurs are often right, but at the wrong time. And this is exactly what he meant. It is frustrating. Uh, another one was people saying to get out of big moves too soon. So these are people who are making some money, right? They catch the timing, they're doing okay, but they're just not staying in the trade long enough. And so they're not making the big profits that are potentially there in the market. Getting stopped out too soon, well, that's, uh, or too often, that's a big one. Uh, not knowing the best place to exit the market, a lot of you uh, talked about that. So that's in common. Trading a trend that doesn't follow through. You know, trend trading is a big thing. Everybody talks about trend. Everybody thinks they know what it is. By the way, most people do not fully understand the details of trends. But that aside, people see a trend or they think they do, they get in, and then the trend stops going after they get in. Have you ever had that problem? Where you can watch, in fact, let me ask you this question. Have you ever watched a trend go up and up and up and up and up until you get in? And then, call darn it, it just seems like when you get in, well, that's exactly when the trend ends. Tip in yes or no. Just curious to see if, if many of you have that problem, because nobody actually stated it, the problem that way. You know, the wordings are similar. So, yeah, why, why, yes, yes, why, yep. All right. So the key with trend, by the way, um, I've got a little slogan. I'm going to give you an ancient Chinese saying well, that I just made up. So here's the ancient Chinese saying that I just made up. The dollars are in the details. The dollars are in the details. So trend is got a dollars that are in the details thing. Higher high and higher low is not a trend necessarily. It might turn into one, but it's not necessarily one in and of itself. So the way I ask the question, and again, talk about details. How many of you watched a trend go up and up and up and up and up? Well, I said five ups. That's a five wave trend. The average trend is five waves. And so now, as you've probably heard, the trend is your friend until the end. So if you're getting in after a trend has been going up and up and up and up and up, and then you get in, guess what you're doing? You're treating the opposite side of the trend, the opposite side of the mathematical probabilities. 
the mathematical model is that the longer a trend continues, the less likely it is to continue. And that's where that uh, vernacular comes from. The trend is your friend until the end. There's a mathematical model behind that. So professionals get in early in a new trend. So as Fausto says, I'm even older than he is, which is pretty old because Fausto's ancient. <laughs> I just had to say that to him, get back at him a little bit. Fausto is a great guy. I consider him a friend and we tease each other a little bit. But yes, I am old and I have been trading for over five decades. I had the um, privilege of being raised by a father who was a trader. My dad was a stock trader. So I was around it all my life, and he started my formal education at the, year, at the ripe age of eight years old, knee high to a grasshopper. So I'm gonna give you that five decades of experience today in one sentence. How's that? This is kind of what I'm famous for doing, is taking big concepts, complicated concepts, and simplifying them. So I'd write this sentence down if I was you. Always and only trade early in the direction of the dominant energy of the market. To me, that is the big picture, the bird's eye view of what trading is all about. Trading is never easy, but to me, this is the easiest way to trade. And I use this little um, word picture here. So these guys, whitewater rafting, just blast. I don't know if you've done it, but it's a lot of fun. I encourage you to try it out. But they've got those paddles. They are not using those paddles to propel that raft forward. The river, that current, that white water river is pushing them forward. In fact, to go in the opposite direction would be really hard. To go with the flow of the current, pretty darn easy. In fact, it's just gonna happen, right? That's the way the current is going. That's the universe, that's where it's going. And the easy thing to do is just, well, like they say in life, go with the flow. Easiest thing to do with trading, go with the flow. Now, what are we talking about with flow? I'm talking about the money flow or the current of currency. That's got a nice alliteration to it, doesn't it? The current of currency. All right, so now that's just kind of a word picture. So we're going to break this down for you. In trading, there's never any certainties. You know, technical analysis is great. I do use it, but I'm very aware that the market could do anything at any time. The market is unpredictable. In fact, literally, I do not predict what the market's going to do. I don't like the word prediction with the market. And there's no certainties at all. Uh, and let me tell you, if um, there's another saying that news trumps technicals. So like yesterday, we had big news and the market moved dramatically. Anytime big news, doesn't even have to be news, actually. It could just be rumor or gossip. And if the market um, you know, responds to that with a knee-jerk reaction, guess what? At that point, it doesn't give a mouse's left patootie what your moving averages are saying or what your candlesticks are saying or what your MACD, LMNOP, CCI, stochastic, nothing. All that goes out the window, all right? And I know, because I've seen it on the floor of the CME. People go crazy. <laughs> you know, of course, this is back in the old days, back in the uh, prehistoric days when, um, yeah, all the pits were open and so forth. But anyway, that was very instructional to see for me. So what we do is we create probability scenarios. So I use five uncorrelated energies of money flow to put the ads on your side. Operative word is uncorrelated. So here are the five energies of money flow that I use. Number one, trend, right? We talked a little bit about that. Number two, momentum. That's the strength of the trend. Number three is I, use a, I do use an indicator to time my entries. This is what helps prevent me from getting in too early and then getting stopped out, as my mentor in Chicago said, being right but at the wrong time. So I had to learn how to time my entries with precision and accuracy to the penny paper tick. That's where my cycle indicator comes in. Number four, bouncing off support resistance. Support resistance levels, very important. Those are supply demand zones from the past that markets look for in the future to see what's going to happen in the future. And then number five, I look at the next higher time frame, and I look to trade in the direction of momentum of the higher time frame. So that's my five-step formula. That's all I look at. It keeps things simple, only five things. Number, and the second thing is it keeps everything orderly, so it keeps my mind orderly because I've got a five-step 
checklist in order. One, then two, then three, then four, then five. So another slogan I have here is that your trading methodology informs your trading psychology. And what I mean by that is, and some of you even mentioned this when I asked you what your challenges were, mental overwhelm, too much information. So you cannot trade with mental overwhelm. You cannot function psychologically that way. So you've got to keep your trading methodology simple enough that your mind can handle it and function with clarity. So psychologists say that the average human brain can handle seven pieces of uncorrelated information concurrently. I don't know if I have an average human brain, but I will tell you this, I don't want to stretch it. When it comes to trading, I don't want to push the limits. And so I only use five pieces of information. And then, so that keeps me within the boundaries of being able to process the information. Now there's other good stuff you could use, by the way, I wanna make this clear. Just because I'm only using these five, that doesn't mean there's not other good stuff, there is. I just don't need it to make money. There's many ways to groom a cat. There's many ways to trade it. They can all work. This is mine, this is what works for me. So yeah, there's other good stuff that I could use, but I don't need it to make money. So therefore I don't use it so that I prevent mental overwhelm. And then again, for the psychology of trading, do it in a specific order. And that makes trading rather simple, not easy, but simple. So what we're doing is a determining a probability scenario. And how do I do that? Well, at each point where I'm looking to enter, I simply ask the question, how many of those energies are aligned? And I get a score, a score of one out of five literally scoring a trade as to how many of those five energies are aligned. Obviously, the higher the score, the higher the probability we consider the trade has. And it's kind of like trading or taking each trade to court. We need five independent witnesses to establish a preponderance of the evidence. Now, the operative word there is independent. You can, this is not, do not confuse this with just throwing five uh, indicators on a chart. That's meaningless, meaningless. It's not even about the indicators. It's about the independent measurement, uncorrelated, actually I like the word uncorrelated better, the five uncorrelated variables of money flow. And they've got to be uncorrelated. I've had people send me charts with you know five indicators and they say, oh, I made my own five indicator trading method or whatever. And I look at them, I'm like, yeah, dude, these are all, um, trend indicators. So what you really got is a one energy method measured with five instruments. That'd be like putting, you know, five speedometers on the dashboard of your car. So that's again where dollars, the dollars are in the details. People don't even understand the indicators that they're trading. So let's talk about that a little bit, these energies. So we're going to focus on energy number one and two today a little bit and not do a deep dive, but a little more of an intermediate dive into them. Because I see these are where you, uh, most of you are struggling based on the um, responses that you gave. So dollars are in the details. So let's talk about trend. Trend is direction. That's its general meaning. Actually, if we wanna dig a little deeper, uh, Webster's Dictionary defines trend as the extended general direction. So trend is not just direction, it's the long-term direction. Now, I'm not saying that just because I was a lousy English student and I'm still trying to, um, you know, uh, reconcile that <laughs> and become better. Uh, I say it because it also has financial implications in trading. We want to get into a trend that has a long-term move for financial reasons. We want a big reward, right? Big reward, small risk. So it has financial implications. So since we're talking or using the term energy with these, the trend is like this woman walking north. Her energy is, well, her direction is north, fine, but we would be foolish to place bets on how far she's going to go north because there's no probability there. And trading is all about probability. She could walk one step north and then turn around and go south. Or she could take another, um, or she could walk another 10 city blocks in New York City we don't know. There's no probability, so there's no odds. 
That'd be a fool's errand to bet on that. So if trading trend alone gives you zero probability. It has, it's a, it has no lagging, or I'm sorry, it has no leading properties whatsoever. So what do I use? Well, the tool, the instrument that I personally use, and you can use different things. I just use simple stuff. I don't make trading complicated. By the way, I don't even have any proprietary indicators. Every indicator, what everything I use is standard on any charting platform out there. So I just use the good old 50 period simple moving average to measure trend. Again, it's not gonna directly make me money by itself, but it gives me an indication, which by the way, that's what indicators do. Uh, that's what they promise, is they promise to indicate. If they made us money directly, we'd call them money makers, but we don't because they don't. So the indication, the 50 period simple moving average, 50 bars, long-term move, right? Is it lagging? Absolutely, yes. Anything that has an average is lagging and that's okay. It just gives us a indication. So that's what I use, 50 SMA gives the overall direction of the market. By the way, if you look at this, sometimes people say, well, again, higher highs, higher lows are a trend. Um, here we have a higher low and a higher high in the ellipse there, as you can see, but that doesn't really fit the, the definition of the word, to extend in a general direction. Uh, going down the 50MA, that's the extended general direction from the high on the left of the chart. Let's see if I can, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse. Can you guys see my cursor on the chart? I'm kind of afraid to bring up a, um, let's see, yeah, I'm afraid to bring up the uh, drawing tool because the last time I did that, Zoom froze on me. You can see it, okay, cool. Okay, so I'll just use my cursor. So yeah, the extended general direction here is down and the 50 MA gives us that indication. Uh, this move up, the higher low and the higher high, that's just a complex retrace in an overall downtrend. Okay, so all right, can we make money with that? Not by itself, but it's one piece of evidence. Remember, preponderance of the evidence, like putting together a legal case. So then we got to go to energy number two, because energy number one is not enough. And energy number one is lagging. So now we go to momentum. Now, I hired a mentor because I was doing okay with trend trading for a while, and I felt like I was missing something. I actually felt like I was blind to something, because I would trade these trends and just as you indicated earlier, you know, I was getting stopped out sometimes. I couldn't for the life of me figure it out. And again, I just, I really, really, really had the sense that I was blind to something. And so I went to, I hired a mentor and, um, and I was, I literally was blind. What I was blind to was the energy of momentum. I had not yet incorporated that into my trading methodology. So what is momentum? Well, I'll share with you what he taught me and I've expanded on it uh, since then, obviously. Momentum is the strength of the trend. So there's two types of trends. Whenever I ask people this, they usually say uptrend and downtrend. That's not the wrong answer. That's a correct answer. But that is not the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Since we're creating a, a legal case for our trades here, there's a reason in court that they ask people to say the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And they don't just say, is that the truth? because they know that people can him and haw and edge around the truth. Same in trading. So the trend is your friend. Yep, that's true, but it's not the whole truth. We only want to trade one kind of trend, a strong trend. And my mentor, he asked me, he said, well, Barry, these trends you're trading, are these strong trends or weak trends? And my answer was, uh, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, yeah, that's what I figured. So I had to learn to determine which is a strong trend or a weak trend. So here's the little analogy for trend or for momentum, I'm sorry. So momentum, unlike that woman who was walking north, she had no momentum. Momentum is literally velocity times mass. That's what it is. You know, isn't, I'm so I'm such a good, you know, sales guy. Here I am talking about statistics and math and probabilities, this is all the kind of stuff that people just love to hear about. But anyway, but it's the truth and this is what makes me money. So, velocity and mass. Did the woman have much velocity? No, she was just walking north. She didn't have much speed or, or uh, velocity. So she was going slowly. Now, she wasn't running, okay? Then 
mass. Did she have a lot of mass? No, no, she was nice, slim, trim, fit. Um, and so for that reason, she could turn around and walk south within one human footstep, or even less, she could just swivel on a foot and go the other direction. So there was zero leading properties to her movement, and that's why we wouldn't place bets on that, as opposed to this bullet train here. Now, this bullet train is screaming north at 100 miles an hour. That's velocity. Got a lot of mass. I don't know what it weighs, but it's a lot. Okay, we don't have to be PhDs in physics to understand these basic concepts. We live in a physics world, a physical world. So we, we've got these general concepts down. So now guess what? Here's a cool thing, my friends. You know the future. You know the future. And you don't have to be a PhD in psych or in physics. You don't have to be a psychic. You don't have to have a crystal ball. If I were to give you that emergency brake to the bullet train there, and you press that brake, now you know the future. You know that train going 100 miles an hour with all that weight is not going to stop on a dime and turn around and go south within one human footstep. Not going to happen. That's not the energy. That's not normal. And we all know that. So momentum is a leading indication. It does give us an indication, at least, of what's going to happen in the near future, namely that the trend will continue. That is of huge value, enormous value. That's everything, because we've got to have some sort of leading indication, whether it's an indicator or something else. Because, well, I mean, it just stands to reason, because, I don't know about your broker, but my broker is very rude. My broker requires that I trade the hard red edge of the screen into the unknown future before the bars are formed. So very rude of him. I'm really offended that he makes me do that, but he does. Because I'm a master of reading historical charts, and he will not let me make money with them. So for that reason, we've got to have some indication of the unknown future. Otherwise, can't trade, can't make money. So momentum is the key. Now, what does momentum mean in the markets? These analogies are all swell. I haven't used the word swell for a long time. But what does that mean in the market? So here's what it means literally. The velocity of orders going through the market is the speed of the orders going through. How fast and furious are they going through? So in other words, is it buy, 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 or is it buy, 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 now, if you want to see this on uh, like a time and sales window, that would be a place where you could actually visually see it. And you could see the how fast do those orders scroll through the time and sales window. So the speed of how fast they go through. Now, volume uh, is what we equate to mass. So velocity times mass. So speed of the orders is velocity. Mass equates to the volume, the size of those orders. Now, not all volumes created equal. So again, dollars that are in the details. Remember, that's what professional trading is all about. So a lot of people just look at the volume history on the bottom of their charts and they think they're geniuses and learn to read price and volume. That's good, definitely good, not against it, I'm for it. However, if you wanna be a real professional trader, you might wanna get into a little more detail. And the key distinction in volume is this, professional volume, versus retail volume. That's the distinction. That's what you want. Retail volume, amateur volume, is actually or can potentially actually be a counter indication. Why? Because most people lose money. And those are the amateurs who are losing money. So whatever they're doing, most of the time, gonna be wrong. So we wanna identify the professional volume, the smart money. And that's the volume you want to follow. Okay, so let's bring up uh, some charts here, show you what we're talking about. So now here we got an example of our good old friend, the 50 period simple moving average, angling up, cool, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, all well and good. Now here's the problem. Let's say that uh, this right here, we are the hard, hard edge of the screen. Let's say that's real time. Now, obviously we can see in the future here, and I did that intentionally. But we've got 50 MA angling up, we've got higher highs, higher lows. So how would we know, or how would we determine that this market right here at this time 
is not a good one to buy. That this trend is not likely to continue going up right here. That is the pregunta, that is the frogging. And that's what we got to know. So is trend up at this snapshot in time? The answer is yes, it is. But again, trend is lagging, whether you do it with higher highs, higher lows, moving averages, whatever indication you use, it's still going to be lagging. So the problem is, again, you're blind to momentum here. Why? Because I put my black curtain over the momentum. <laughs> okay, so let's pull the curtain back and see what we got. Oh my gosh, now we've got a whole new picture. So now what we see is higher high on price, higher high on momentum, awesome. Higher low on price, higher low on momentum. By the way, this is a little key for you. Well, wait, I'll say that in just a second. Now, then we get another higher high on price, whoops, equal high on momentum. So momentum is not getting stronger as price goes up, okay? So that's our first little shout over the bow, so to say, a little warning sign that, hmm, market is still going up with strength, but it's not going up with more strength. It's just going up with equal strength. Then we come back down. Now, we even get a nice little uh, candlestick here, uh, a, for a bullish candlestick, but look at momentum. It's gone down, it's gone down to what, zero. Is zero momentum strong? No. Is it weak? No, it's just neutral. The strength has come out of the market. We've still got a higher low. So if you're a pure price action trader, still looks pretty good. You still get your trending pattern. Problem is there's something underneath the price pattern that is not immediately available and visible to the naked eye. So what we need to do is get like, it's just like with the microscope. Right, you can look at stuff and see it with your naked eye. And there it is, cool. Now, if you look at that same thing with, it, you might look at the edge of a piece of paper, for example. Look at the edge of the piece of paper with your naked eye, it looks straight. Look at it, at it under a microscope and it's jagged as heck. <laughs> we don't swear here at Top Dog Trading. So under the microscope, all of a sudden you see, oh my gosh, on a different level, different scale, different fractal, uh, this thing's not straight at all. And that's what we need to do. We need to look underneath the surface, under the hood, if you will, and see something from a different perspective. This is where your uncorrelated energies come in. So now we get things that are out of alignment. This is not in alignment. Momentum has gone down to zero. We have now this strong trend has turned into a weak trend. It's still a trend, but it's weak. And I do not want to buy a weak trend because it ain't gonna follow through. So what I was gonna say before was, a lot of people look for like divergences on highs. What they don't look for is the lows in there. That's actually more important in my mind than the highs. So when you're in an uptrend, look at the lows of momentum. Because you know if you wanna buy these retraces, see, I don't wanna buy uh, wholesale, or I don't wanna buy retail, I wanna buy wholesale. So now if you're an aggressive uh, trader, you could even short this. That would be technically shorting against the trend, but that's very aggressive because the trend is still technically up and because momentum is just basically zero. It hasn't really gone negative yet. The more conservative trade would be over here. Wait for price to get below the 50 MA. First retrace after a downtrend is confirmed. That's early. In a new trend, remember we said you want to get early in a trend, not late in a trend. So now we've got an early, we would be getting early into new trend. Again, we've got the same kind of bar just flipped over here. Nice little pin bar, if you will. But this time it actually works because we're in a new downtrend and momentum is below zero. And so momentum is bearish. Now we are early in a new strong downtrend, which is exactly what we want. Now, I think I skipped one. Yeah, energy three, I don't have too much time to go into this one today, but cycles, um, I have a cycle indicator that uh, we use as a modified indicator to uh, help timing. So just wanna use this today. We don't have a lot of time. I wanted to focus on one and two, energies one and two today. Um, but the cycle indicator gives you the, uh, the price 
precise time to get in on these cycle lows. Problem is that again, you can't trade this by itself. No indicator is a moneymaker. So does it measure the timing? Yeah, it measures it actually with incredible accuracy, but that's all it measures. Each one of these things measures one piece of evidence, one energy of money flow. So cycles is about timing. Well, trend is about direction. Momentum is about strength. Now strength determines how far that market is going to follow through. And cycles is just purely about timing. So as you can see, yep, nails that low, nails that high, nails that low, nails that high. But look at this, nails this low, but the problem is the market doesn't really go up anywhere. So the cycles do not measure follow through, momentum does. If I had my, I should bring up my momentum indicator here, but if I had it, you would see that it had zeroed out. And so therefore it doesn't follow through. And then back here, momentum comes back into the market and pushes it up. So timing and trend and momentum are all uh, separate. You gotta put them all together. And then, uh, gosh, I keep going two slides at a time here for some reason. Support resistance. Now, support resistance is very key because this is where the market has found, um, has put in highs and lows in the past. And therefore, in um, market auction theory, we call this, this is where the market has found value in the past. And markets have literal memory. Um, people, we all look at, okay, market went up here, stopped, came down there. So what that means literally is that the market participants have said, yep, I'm willing to pay that much for this particular market at this particular time, but no more. So it's either overvalued, undervalued, or fair price. So now that will change, right? From time to time, as time goes on through the day or the weeks or the months, how the market perceives the value of the market can and does change. So, but so this is used, these are used as reference points. But we all know the market does go through support resistance at times, it has to, otherwise the market would never go anywhere. So the question is, well, how do we determine if the market's going to break through support resistance or hold support resistance? Just because support resistance is there, it's just a reference point. Then we have to say, okay, is it going to hold or not? How do we do that? Very simple. So this is number four for a reason. We have to have numbers one, two, and three first. So as we go up here, we'll just take this example right here today. And we go up to this resistance level. This is a cluster. It's a cluster of this high. So the market has seen that high in the past. And then if you use Fibonacci, then you know Fibonacci traders are seeing a 50% retrace. Why are clusters powerful? Clusters are powerful for a very logical reason. And it's not because there's two lines there. Okay, got nothing to do with lines. Lines mean nothing. The only reason we draw the lines there is because the market has found a, a, a shift of supply demand there in the past. So when you get clusters, and by the way, the, the most powerful clusters are those that come from uncorrelated support resistance levels. So in other words, it could be floor trader pivots, or and Fibonacci and previous major swing highs and lows, you know, so various uncorrelated. And the reason that is important is because you have different market participants looking at different support resistance techniques. So the more people who see that level, the more people are going to respond to it one way or another, buy, sell, or um, short, or take profits. And that's what's happening. So that's why uncorrelated clusters are, are the more important because you've got all these different people use diff different support resistance techniques and more people responding to it. It's just basic auction theory. So now when we come up into this level, we got a cluster of two different types, this high, previous high, and Fibonacci. Okay, so how do we determine with probability that the market's not going to slice up and go above that support level, that this is gonna hold and the market goes down? Well, a couple of things. Number one, it's time cycle indicator. Uh, number two, got a nice little candlestick pattern. Uh, number three, is there much momentum going up? No. What's it take to go through support resistance? It takes momentum. When markets do break through support resistance, they're breaking through it on high velocity of orders, speed of orders, lots of orders coming in fast and furious, and big volume, professional volume. 
That's what breaks support resistance levels, my friends. Do we have it here? No. No, we do not. Did we have it coming down? Yes, we did. Did we have it coming down here? Yes, we did. Look again, by the way, momentum was kind of a leading indication here. We came down, but on less strength than we came down on that impulse move. Okay, so you might say, well, that's a divergence and we should go along. And it's technically a divergence from technical analysis point of view, but that does not mean you should go along. The trend is down. We are still at early in a downtrend. We got above the 50 MA here, but look, the 50 MA is still angling down. Still only down. So that this is just an ABC complex retrace in an overall downtrend. The extended general direction of the trend is down. Beautiful place to enter actually, because you got a downtrend, you've got a weak momentum on the retrace, you got an ABC complex retrace, you've got a cycle high, you got a cluster of resistance you're shorting off, you know, show me the money. And then the final energy, let's illustrate this on a chart, is the fractal energy. That's just a fancy name for using multiple time frames. So uh, the short-term time frame is on the left, long-term is on the right. So we've got price meandering right around the 50 MA above it, then it meanders below it. Still kind of just going sideways, right? But technically we're below the 50 MA now, okay. What does that mean? Well, that, that signal right there, just being below the 50 MA, that and a $20 bill that'll get me a homeopathic amount of caffeine at Starbucks. That's what that's worth, okay? But it's one little piece of evidence, right? It's like, you know, it's got the ingredient there. And actually, you know, in homeopathics, it doesn't even have the ingredient anymore. It's just the, the water has the memory of the ingredient. <laughs> anyway, don't get me started on that. But we do get an engulfing candlestick pattern, cool. We got a cycle high, okay. Momentum slightly below zero. But then we look over here at the longer term chart. Trends down, cycles down, momentum's down. Huh, guess what we got? Alignment of energies. Alignment of energies. Put together the five pieces of uncorrelated evidences, evidence I, evidence C's, whatever it is. Today I wasn't great at English. And now we have a probability scenario. All right, and by the way, momentum on the higher time frame is very important. That is it, that's the strength of the market move on the higher time frame. So that is really, um, I, I don't trade without it. That's how important it is. I insist on that on every trade I take, no matter what kind of trade it is, I gotta have that. That is a deal breaker. That will actually hold veto power over an otherwise good looking trade. That's how critical it is. So putting it all together, um, we'll just show you an example of the five energy method. It's right down here, by the way, or up here, five list. We're below the 50 MA, come above it for the first time and retrace. That's your first retracement in a new uptrend. So we're early in a new trend, right? Number two, where's momentum? It's, it comes down a little bit, that's normal on a retrace, but it holds above zero. So it's still strong. There's our cycle low, that's energy number three. Energy number four, we're holding support, the red line there. And number five, we look over at the next higher time frame. Now look, trend is down, that's okay, I don't care. Trend's a lagging indicator. But cycle is up on the longer term time frame, and most importantly, momentum is screaming up, screaming up. So now we have a total shift of supply and demand. And I'm all over that. That's a five out of five trade. Here's a couple of recent examples. I just wanted to update it a little bit for you today. So real quick, price comes below the 50 MA. Okay, 50 MA angles turns down. Your little ABC complex retrace, cycle high. Um, going over here to the long-term chart, look, momentum, again, down. Five out of five trade. Early in a new tr uh, trend here, momentum down there. Another recent example. Here's a Forex. I'm, I'm showing different markets, by the way. I'm kind of going through these fast because my, my time's coming to an end here. So, but just want to show you this works for different markets, different time frames, et cetera. Oops. So this, that was a stock. This is Forex, 30 minute chart. It doesn't matter which time frame you're using, really, it's, um, it adapts. So early in a new trend, again, first retrace in the trend, wave two, a uh, little complex retrace there. 
and we come over here. There we go. Momentum on the higher time frame is up. Okay, an example with the E minis, same thing. First retrace in the trend, nice ABC complex retrace. I love these ABC complex retrace, by the way. Uh, comes into the support of the moving averages there. So we've got support. And then we go over here to the longer time frame. And sure enough, we've got momentum going up. So here's another example. This is Facebook daily charts. So you could do this on daily charts as well. Had a gap down, came up to the 50 MA. Um, or we got a new cycle or a new uh, downtrend, sorry. Uh, momentum holds below zero and down she goes. Nice nine wave um, downtrend and over here, momentum down, down. Beautiful trades, all of these are the same. First retrace in a new trend with momentum, with cycle and longer term time frame momentum. So all we're looking for is the alignment of five uncorrelated energies of money flow to put the odds on your side. In fact, my whole methodology can be summarized in one sentence. That's how simple it is. We're looking to get in early in a new trend. That's number one. That is strong. That's momentum. At the right time, using my timing indicator, with support at your back, support resistance. And then if, when that all lines up, we look at the next higher time frame and we just make sure that the um, bigger scale momentum on the next higher time frame is supporting the trade. If it is, man, I take it every single time. It's that simple, I don't even think about it. So one, two, three, four, five, very objective, very rule-based. And again, it works for pretty much any market. Any, I will say this caveat, any market that has professional involvement, because we want to trade with the smart money. I call this hooking your wagon into the whales. We watch for the whales, they're the smart money, and they got the big money, they got the institutional money, they got the block trades. So I'm gonna just take my little bit of money, put it in my little red wagon, and um, hook my wagon to the tail of the whale and let him go. Just like that Whitewater River example, right? Here you go, smart money, hey, I can't beat them. I can't beat them. People complain, oh, the institutions have advantages. Heck yeah, they do. So what? If you can't beat them, join them. Let, uh, let them use those advantages and just follow them on the way to victory. So yeah, take advantage of that. Works for any time frame: investing, swing trading, day trading. I do all three of those. I use the same time energy method for them all. Uh, any uh, objective um, review source, we, we get great reviews. You can see there out of 66 reviews, uh, four in about two thirds stars. Facebook, all the reviews that people have given us there, five out of five, Stocks and Commodities Magazine, Reader's Choice Awards, uh, Trustpilot. Um, I should update these numbers here. They're a little bit old, but still, um, reviews are still the same. So um, I do have a quick little offer for you today that I'm going to um, uh, share with you. And so we've got a couple of options for you. So um, one of them is what uh, they just typed in there. Thank you, um, Rich. So topdogtrading.com forward slash free. If you want to get some uh, free stuff from me, um, you can definitely go there and I'll be very happy to make that available to you. So um, also I've got, and I'm going to have to type this in here because we just came up with this. And this is brand new. Didn't even plan on offering this for you today, but I'm going to give you a special super duper whooper offer. Uh, only because um, I don't normally do this, but with Fausto, I'll do this for you. So what I'm going to do is give you, if you're really interested in learning the entire five energy method, all the uh, details and so forth, um, here's what I got for you. A nice package. So I'm going to give you a package of courses. Course one is my trend trading course. Uh, this retails on my website for 497. You'll get my cycle indicator. Okay, which again, it's a modified indicator. So in other words, it's an indicator that's already in your charts. I just want to be very transparent about that, but we modify it. So the good thing about that is it will work on any charting platform because it's already on your charting platform. We just make some modifications to it. All right, and that's the indicator we use to time our entries with precision. And then how to get in early in a new trade. So you buy wholesale, not retail. How to get into the penny, pip or tick the cycle indicator gets us in with that kind of precision, objective rule-based method and how to get in with the whales, the whale watching. 
Now, course number two that I'm including in the package today is my Momentum course. Uh, this retails on Top Dog Trading for $4.98. These are not made up prices that I just, you know, rectally extract and say, <laughs> this is a value of. No, these are the actual prices at Top Dog Trading. If you want to check it out, feel free to go there. Um, so this one will give you the long-term momentum indicator. Again, the indicator already in your charts we modified. So this one tells you how to know if a trend is strong or weak. Six pure momentum trade setups and the momentum filter I use on the longer term time frame. I'm also going to include my training psychology course today. Now, this is a big one. And this course is, wow. Um, I, don't, I, got, you know, I just got to tell you the truth. This course is the one thing that I've seen turn more people from non-profitable traders to profitable traders, because it's not just reading about trading psychology. There's value in that, but trading is a performance-based activity and more, more than an intellectual activity. So it's not so much about information. Information's important, you do have to have that, but ultimately you've got to have transformation to be a trader. And trading is not natural. Trading goes against human instincts. As human beings, we're social beings, we have a herd instinct. So 80% of the people or so lose money trading. If you do what your instincts say, you're gonna be part of the herd and you'll be in loser land. So what we do in this trading psychology course is we teach you how to uh, break free of that natural instinct and how to actually change your behavioral finance. It's the, uh, the science of behavioral finance. So there's exercises in here. And these exercises are behaviors that you do. And then those behaviors transform you. So when you go to trade with your real money, your behavior is different. So it's very, very practical. All right, and that course, by the way, um, I actually sold that for $5,000. And so that's uh, the actual price that that went for. Uh, direct email access to me for my trading questions. I do offer consulting. If you're interested, you can just consult with me directly. I do charge $1,000 an hour. I know some of you, that might seem like a lot, but I'm worth it and people do pay me for that. And that is also on my website. Um, I'm gonna throw in an extra video, Pat, or yeah, pack of videos here, how to trade gaps, how to trade the news, give you a 90 day, 100% no money back, or 100% no questions as money back guarantee. Everything, all five items here for just a one-time investment of 495. So um, yeah, let me go ahead and type this uh, link in as well. And there you go. So I'm actually putting this, as you can see, it's not on topdogtrading.com. Now this one, the URL is barryburns.com. Whoops, I mistyped that actually. Sorry about that. That's actually barryburns.com slash seven. There we go. Told you this was last minute. Literally, I put this together right before we started the presentation today. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's how, uh, that's how quickly we put this together just for you guys. So barryburns.com, make sure you put it in the dot com slash seven. And um, that's a one-time investment uh, for life. You got three months to make your final decision. You've got direct access to me for any trading questions you have. And you get uh, the two courses that will give you the entire, by the way, those two courses give you the entire five energy methodology, all the details, the trading psychology course, direct access to me for any questions you have. Uh, that goes beyond the 90 days, by the way. So you'll have access to me for life and the bonus pack, how to trade gaps, how to trade the news. And if any time within the next 90 days, you decide it's not for you for whatever reason, no problem. Just um, send us an email and no questions asked. We just say, fine, here's the uh, uh, money back on your uh, course, course purchase. All right, well, I got like uh, three minutes left. So any last preguntas, questions, frogins, inquiries, whatever, Just type it in now or forever hold your peace. Simon asks, what momentum indicator do I use? That is revealed in course two. I do not give that out for free. It's not in any of my YouTube videos or my blog or nothing. That is only available to my personal trading students, which you can become today. Uh, let's see, thank you, Ray. Appreciate that. Very welcome, my friend. 
Uh, what else we got here? Wayne, you have to be going faster or slower than the current in order to maintain control of the water. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're doing a, uh, <laughs> I see. You'd be very literal about the, uh, the Whitewater River example. Okay. <laughs> Yes, good point. Good point. <laughs> That's funny. Paul, uh, what time frames do you like to trade on? Um, I day trade and I swing trade and I invest. I manage a pension plan. For that, we do a long term investing, obviously, holding years. Swing trading, I'll hold for uh, a week or so, sometimes up to a month, just kind of depends, you know, as long as the market's moving with me, I'm not going to get out of the trade. Uh, day trading, um, it varies depending on the market because um, you know different markets that have different um, average daily volumes, I'll use different time frames for. But again, that's all in the course as to how to determine the best time interval for your charts. All right, thank you, Simon. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Michelo. Uh, David says, I've been a student of Berries for a couple of months now and has turned my trading around. Well, thank you. Thank you, David. I'm glad, I'm excited. Uh, Hunter asked, does trading, the psychology address holding trades to not lose equity, but end up losing more? That is in profit, end up losing. Hmm. Well, the, yeah, we, yeah, definitely we address very specific trading problems in the trading psychology course. That's individualized. So I share with you in there the most common problems that people have. And one of them is holding onto losses. Another one of them is not letting your winners run. Another one is not keeping your stops. So all of these common things, yeah, we deal with them all. Absolutely. Uh, I have the funds now as long as the Aussie doesn't keep dropping on me. Thanks, Barry. I was like, what do you have to say with great experience? Thank you. Appreciate that, Dean. All right. Well, my time is up. 